Okay, I fasted for over 72 hours now and then I'm about to break my fast. Now for a lot of people watching this, they'll be thinking, do I have an eating disorder? Why would I not eat for over three days? Do I look like I have an de eating disorder? I'm rocking solid muscles now. I used to be fat, look at this guy. I was eating a lot of carbohydrates and I was eating all the time. It is not healthy. 99% of the population have never done 24 hours without food. And also this guy, Dana White, the president of the UFC, he just did an 86 hour fast a few days ago and posted up this picture from the before and after. He actually looked pretty good before already, but after he's rocking a solid six pack and this guy is in his mid fifties. Okay, I am turning 45. Dana White is taking TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, but I am not. I've changed so much just because of diet and exercise. So let me show you what I'm gonna eat to break this fast. I'm having two big lamb chops, four egg omelet, 100 grams of beef, 50 grams of liver, and some onions and garlic, and that's it. So if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna finish this meal and then I'm gonna to explain to you why I lost so much weight on a, on a fast and eating a lot of meat and eggs. Okay, so regarding fasting, there's only two types of people who should not fast. One, people who are already underweight, and two, people who have low blood pressure. Everyone else, especially if they're overweight, they shouldn't experience any problems fasting. However, when people first start fasting, they may experience something called keto flu because their body is not using, uh, used to using ketones for fuel. Now, most of us, or people who don't fast, they will burn glucose for fuel. And glucose comes from carbohydrates and also can be converted from protein and fat. But when the body isn't uh, getting fuel uh, in terms of carbohydrates, it switches into ketosis, which is burning your own body fat, which is why uh, the ketogenic diet is great in terms of weight loss. And when you burn your body fat, it produces ketones, which is an alternate fuel. And it's actually a more efficient fuel for the brain. People who are on, um, on, fast, on fast or eating a carnivore diet, they'll often report they, if they had brain fog before, if their, brain, uh, if their thinking was cloudy and not clear before, if they had memory problems before, after fasting or after going on a carnivore diet, they experience mental clarity. So it's huge benefits. In fact, the benefits of fasting have been known for so long. Wise men used to do it thousands of years ago. Monks in Japan, China, India, in Europe, they used to do it. Wise men like Socrates in Greece, uh, he used to make his students and all the other philosophers, they used to make their students fast. Why did they do that? Because they would exp experience more mental clarity. So, and even in the Bible, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, you can question whether that's a real story or not. Depends if you're religious or not. For me, uh, on a long fast, it's actually very, very difficult mentally. I will admit that. But you start learning how to control your mind and knowing that there's two voices in your head. One encouraging you to go ahead and the other one, and that's like a conscious thought process and the other one telling you to fail and to give up. So in terms of how to approach fasting, I would suggest everyone start off with intermittent fasting and at 14 hours. So if you finish dinner at 8 p.m., you don't eat breakfast again until 10 a.m. And that's how I usually train. I will go to the gym and start working out at like 8 a.m., finish at 9 and I'll eat breakfast at 10 a.m. Um, and uh, some people can push it back to 16 hours. So uh, finish dinner at 8 p.m. and then eat uh, again at noon. And as you become more and more used to fasting, then um, you'll be able to fast for longer and then start trying out prolonged fasting, which is over 24 hours. But uh, first get used to it so that you don't get keto flu and uh, also definitely buy powdered electrolytes to put in your drinks in your water. 
All right, we are in McDonald's. I thought it was very fitting to go and film this part in McDonald's. Now, nutrition science is actually the most inaccurate science out there, okay? Physics, very accurate. Biology, chemistry, very accurate. They change one variable in lab and see how that one change affects a group or of people or, or, a pro or something, a reaction. Uh, nutrition science uses a lot of studies based on epidemiology, which is basically observing trends, okay, observational science. So let's say uh, you want to prove, let's, this is a sausage muffin, right? Let's, let's say it's a burger and I want to prove so my hypothesis, my prediction, is that uh, red meat produces uh, colon cancer or, or heart disease. Then I find 500 people who have been, been eating this burger, which let's say it's a burger and it has beef in it, so red meat. Then I, I will say, well, then I look at the data and then from the 500 people eating this burger, the rate of cancer, colon cancer is much higher, or the rate of uh, heart disease is much higher. So then I can just say, well, is the red meat is causing heart disease and causing colon cancer. But that, there's, a, there's a possible association between the heart disease and the red meat. It doesn't mean the red meat is actually causing the heart disease. You see this, no, the studies don't tell you this, okay? So it could be the bread in the bun which is causing the heart disease. The people who are eating the burgers are also usually eating fries and drinking a sugary drink, which could be causing the heart disease. So the actual cause of the heart disease could be the sugary drink or the fries. But the researchers, because their hypothesis is on the red meat, they'll say it is the red meat, the beef, which is causing the heart disease. And they're not lying because it's hard to say whether it is the fries or the drink or the meat because all they're doing is doing a study based on the burger or a study on association and not causation okay it is not definitely the beef is causing it but when these studies go out to mainstream websites and even when doctors see these studies the studies will not specifically say this okay which is why nutrition science is the most inaccurate science out there and I'll give you an example. In 1963, the sugar industry paid three professors in Harvard University, the top university in America, to do a study which showed that there's nothing wrong with sugar. And Harvard University professors took $10,000 each. Okay, the New York Times uncovered this. Uh, back then, $10,000 would be like $80,000 now. Okay, so it's basically corruption. And uh, Harvard University even now will still say, if you go to the Harvard Medical School website, it will still say saturated fats cause heart disease, cause cardiovascular disease. But there's a lot of research which shows sugar and carbohydrates cause that. That's why nutrition science is so inaccurate. Now, I don't wanna get sued by Harvard uh, Medical School, so, I'm not gonna say they're being paid by food companies or whatever, but food companies will definitely fund research, okay? Because it is in their interest to change community, uh, consumer spending habits so that they will buy more processed foods and fast foods. They don't want consumers to eat healthy whole foods or meats because the profit margin is very low. They want them to eat processed foods. So if you are not going to eat red meats, you are not going to eat meats. You are not going to eat eggs. What are you going to eat? You're just going to eat processed foods. There is there's a trend towards being eating vegan, eating more vegetables, but uh, that's another issue. That, that that diet has its own problems. But the main thing is to avoid processed foods, fast foods, and high carbohydrate content because that is the real cause of heart disease. And I'll tell you another company. And this one, I am not scared of being sued because I am going to put, I've put all these things in the description below so you can click on the link and see what this has happened. The corruption in 1963 where the sugar industry paid Harvard uh, professors and um, this about Kellogg's, okay? Now, 
most people think breakfast is the most important meal of the day, all right? It's a well-known saying. If you Google that, you will even find websites where there will be doctors on those websites talking about studies which show that if you eat breakfast, it will boost your metabolism and be healthy for you. Guess who funded the study? Kellogg's. So if you Google, breakfast is the most important study of, uh, sorry, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but you add Kellogg's to the back of the search, then you'll find that saying was actually invented by Kellogg's. Of course they would invent that because it sounds good and it boosts their sales, okay? And what is even more ridiculous, again, is in the link in the description below. If you Google Kellogg's, masturbation then you will find basically he was a very religious man this is like a hundred years ago right he was a very religious man and he felt that sex and masturbation was really dirty and wrong and he felt red meat boosted sex drive okay so he wanted to invent a breakfast made of grains which will lower sex drive links in the description it is in english for my friends in ta taiwan i am sorry if it's not in chinese you'll have to translate it yourself but uh well lowering sex drive isn't exactly healthy is it and i'm not saying kellogg's products today they're deliberately trying to lower sex drive i'm just saying the founder of kellogg's that was his aim so basically public knowledge has been completely uh affected by these food companies, even by pharmaceutical companies, to try and keep things the way they are. Because if there are a lot, America right now has 60% of the population in America is obese. This trend is spreading across the world because more and more people are eating processed foods, more and more people are eating fast foods at a higher level and eating more and more carbohydrates rather than eating proteins and fats. And uh, this trend, they want to keep it. Pharmaceutical companies sell hundreds of billions of dollars worth of insulin, of um, anti-cholesterol drugs, of anti-diabetic, uh, anti-blood um, pressure drugs. The uh, amount of money spent on healthcare in the U.S. is now 20% of GDP. It is huge. It is like three thousand, uh, three trillion dollars. Okay, that's three thousand billion dollars spent on healthcare. It is ridiculous. And uh, if people got healthy, then the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical industry would never make the money again. So are they deliberately trying to kill people? No, but it helps them to uh, make sure people are still sick. So they will use the medicine to stop themselves from dying, but they don't want the people to get healthy because if they get healthy, they will stop using the medicine. And I know what you're gonna say. I am not even a doctor. How do I, how do I know all this stuff? How, how am I qualified to uh, say any of this stuff? Because it is literally all on the internet. There's evidence of it. The only reason why some doctors don't know this themselves is because their job is to follow the studies, the research, okay? So they get the research and they say, oh, okay, animal fat causes heart disease. They are not a scientist. They are not a nutritional researcher. That is not their job. Their job is to just talk to their patients every day. So they get the research. They don't know that where the research came from. They don't study the studies, okay? But the studies are paid for by the food companies, by the pharmaceutical companies. And I know why I am more qualified to judge this because I used to work in the finance industry. It's all about greed, okay? Companies, have to boost their sales and profits. And as long as they are not doing anything illegal, why not? See, it is not illegal to go and fund studies, to change people's knowledge of what food is. Because you're not breaking any laws. There's no regulation which says you cannot do a study on, on a burger uh, causing cancer, but then you, you, say, you, you say the red meat is causing it, when in fact it could be the fries and the sugar in the, in the Coke or whatever. That's just the way it is.
yeah, do me a favor. If you like the video, please subscribe and like the video. Um, I promise I will never ever post like that ever again. There's one more thing which I forgot to mention with regards to fasting. And that is uh, why I did the 72 hours. Basically in 2016, a Japanese scientist, I'll put the, put the links in the description as well, discovered that um, uh, prolonged fasting creates a, a state called autophagy where the body will basically recycle all the old crappy cells that's in the body. And uh, he won the Nobel Prize in 2016 for it. Uh, so it's pretty important scientific discovery. It is not like uh, us recycling our skin cells. We recycle skin cells every few weeks. There's a lot of cells in our bodies, even cancer cells, which our bodies are, will not recycle ever. So uh, when you put your body into a state of starvation, which is what fasting is, is controlled starvation, the body can't get more protein. So it has to dig up old damaged cells for protein, which also happen to be cancer cells. Now, a lot of people don't understand that we don't just get cancer cells when we get cancer. We get cancer cells every day. And people only get cancer when the number of cancer cells in the body build up to a large amount. On any given day, our T cells, which is part of our immune system, will eat up some of the cancer cells, but they will miss some of the cancer cells. And that's why people will build up cancer cells over time. It's also why people tend to get cancer later on in life when they've built up more cancer and their immune systems are weaker. So fasting up to 72 hours will cause your body to starve and for your T cells, your immune system, to go and start hunting cancer cells and it will reduce cancer risk. And that's why I did it. So I hope everyone learned a bit from this video and uh, will be able to use better strategies in terms of their dieting and uh, uh, just healthier lifestyle.